Talk to me and Jacobs here on Talk Sport. Now, we promised you Joe Joyce and David Hay, but uh, David Hay won't let Joe Joyce out of the gym because he's got a big fight this Friday. Uh, so, but David is here. Good to see you, David. You too, mate. You too. He's, uh, he's uh, yeah, Joe now, as we said, people may remember him from the from the Olympics where he was very, very unlucky not to win gold at super heavyweight. It was silver. Like, you kind of felt that he was a bit sawn off in that fight, but he's, he's, he's turned pro. It's, it's his debut fight. This Friday, uh, he's, he signed up with you, and he yeah. said that you know there was plenty of people after him. He's a, mm. a bit of a hot prospect, so you must be chuffed to have got him. Yeah, very hot prospect. You know, obviously getting a silver medal at the Olympic Games. You know, he he, he did the best out of any English fighter, and he did it in a, in a manner in which you know there was no disgrace in that final. You know, he fought a guy called Tony Yoka, um, a Frenchman, and everybody I know watched the fight believed he won pretty handily hmm. but you know the judges on the day didn't see it that way and he, he unfortunately walked away with a silver but he wants to go one better as a professional and uh, become the number one in the world and you know he's he's not wasting any time you know at the Indigo at the O2 Arena uh, on Friday night he's got his opportunity against a real live live opponent Ian Lamount Lewison who's been around for nearly 10 years now very dangerous opponent very strong seasoned campaigner at British level you know, he pushed uh, Dylan White to 10-11 rounds not oh. long ago. And he's in a 10-rounder in his first fight. That's pretty much unheard of. Mm. Most professionals, when they turn pro, no, no matter how good their amateur pedigree was, they start off with a four-rounder mm. or a six-rounder to dip their toe in the professional game. David Price, you know, uh, was a, another good fighter <laughs> coming through. Um, fell short. He had all the accolade behind him. It didn't work out. But Joe Joyce, he wants to take the fights that these other Big name heavyweights coming from the Olympics hmm. don't want to do. You know, had Audley Harrison. You know, he, he he didn't quite fulfill the potential that you know he was he was talking about. The difference with uh, uh, Joe Joyce is he wants to do his talking inside of the ring, which is pretty. It's pretty much the, the opposite to me. You know, <laughs> I I do a lot of my talking outside outside of the ring, hmm. but he genuinely just wants to get in the ring and show what he's got. And he wants the best possible opposition. He sparred with Anthony Joshua. He was in Las Vegas um, a couple of weeks back, sparring with Bermain Stavern, the former WBC champion, who challenges the w- current WBC G- BC champion, Deontay Wilder. He, want, he, he takes it. He knows how good he is. So he wants a 10-round. He wants to prove to the world that you know he's a, a force to be reckoned with. And we're looking at British and Commonwealth titles <coughs> as soon as possible in the mm. next few so he's months. He's got the stamina, natural. He, he's got a yeah. natural engine. It's something I've never seen before in a heavyweight. You know, he's six foot six. He's eighteen stone. He's ripped. He does capoeira. He can do backflips and the mm. splits. He's a real athlete. Mm. And for me, that is that's the key. And to to bring him together with Ishmael Antonio Salas, for me, the best coach in the world, the Cuban coach who trained Felix Savon since he was fourteen years of age. He's really sort of engraved that Cuban flavor in him, that, wow. that, that, that real sort of, you know, the relaxedness and the speed and the athleticism and the, the, the punch variety. He's really, really brought the best out of him. And I can't wait for people to tune in for free yeah. on Dave, you know, on Friday night, 9 p.m. Anyone with a television set can tune in. And this is what I was really proud of, that myself and Richard Schaefer, a haymaker, ring star, really want to just give the British fans... Some great nights of boxing for free. Yeah, I mean, it was funny. We, we, I was just talking to you off air. There's a you know, fallout, a slight difference of opinion between Joey Barton, who was co-hosting our breakfast show with Alan Brazil on Monday, and, and Chris Eubank Sr. And, and Joey was just making the point, it's a shame, really, that uh, Chris Jr. is behind a paywall at the moment and not enough people seeing him fight. And you made a very good point about about the old man, didn't yeah. you, really? He was kind of not having that, Chris, as you can imagine, but you made a good point, I thought. Yeah, the reason why Chris Eubank Sr. is a household name is because he was available to every household yeah. sure. back in the day. You know, there's only three channels when he was about. You know, I remember, you know, Nigel Benn, you know, uh, Frank Bruno, Lennox Lewis. I remember following these guys as a, as a, as a youngster and being able to tune in. It was only until, you know, the likes of uh, uh, Eubank, sorry, um, uh, Frank Bruno fought Tyson, it became went on to Sky Sports box office mm. or Sky Sports pay per view as it yeah. was then. But up until that point, you knew who he was. I listened to it on the radio. I remember what, listening to that fight on the radio. Obviously, Bruno lost, but I remember it was a different time when every single person knew who the fighters were. Yeah, and I, I'd love to be part of that. You know, boxing's on a ma- massive high note. With, with me or without me, boxing is in a great place right now. We have yeah. more world champions than any other time in history. And I want to add something to that. I want to just I've got I signed three fighters at the moment. Joe Joyce, 
uh, Olympic silver medalist, uh, Willie Hutchison, one of the most decorated Scotsmen ever uh, to, to turn professional. You know, he's only 19 years of age, fantastic fighter. And Michael Venom Page, the, mm. the amazing mixed martial artist here. You know, if you've never seen them before, Google MVP uh, highlights and just see what this guy can do. He's an absolutely real flamboyant character. And he wants to transcend into boxing, as we saw the big success. It's with. normally the other way around, isn't it? But Sam, people mm. go from boxing and they use that as part of the skills to go into MMA. Yeah, exactly. It's hard that he's gone in. Into I think boxing. It, I think it really. I think it's really the 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 Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor thing that really sort of highlighted the fact that a good fighter is a good fighter, and the fact you've got someone who'd never had a, a professional boxing match pushing uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather ten rounds in a real entertaining fight. I was there ringside. Mm. He won the first three rounds against Floyd Mayweather. Mm. Plain and simple, clear as could, as clear as could see. Yeah. And I didn't believe that could happen. But after that, you know, you've got a lot of other mixed martial artists. There's a guy called Jimmy Manoir who's been calling me out. He's a UFC fighter. Yeah. He's mm. from South London. He's like, okay, this this booked the O2 Arena. I'll come and, I'll come and fight you in a boxing match. Yeah. I'm like, okay, you know, let me get this fight out of the way of belly and then we, get, then we can talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> they, they, and, and it's the fact that you've got such a big fan base from the mixed martial artists um, coming over to boxing and vice versa. I think we're all the same fans anyway. A good a good mixed martial arts fight is just as good as a, a good boxing match, as good as a, a good kickboxing match. As long as it's evenly matched, as long as you get two highly skilled athletes going at it, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's fun. I, 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 my father did mix, did martial arts, so I okay. grew up doing karate as a, as, a, as a youth, watching Jackie Chan movies and Bruce. <laughs> so I, I, love, I love combat. And, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's great when you get different uh, disciplines mixing over. Uh, David Hay is with us. We're going to chat more in a few moments' time. We're going to hear from uh, Eddie Hearn, head of his fight against Tony Belly, and also from Anthony Joshua, who spoke to Goffey yesterday on the drive and mentioned David and the prospect of a fight. So uh, that's all coming up. It's Paul Hawksby and Andy Jacobs here on TalkSport. Good afternoon, Paul Hawksby and Andy Jacobs here on TalkSport. Jason Manford just popped in and saw He did, oh, it's always not, very well, starry it's today. Very cool. I mean, it's like, a, it's amazing. Anyway. Like Parkinson. Um, uh, David Hay is with us. It's a Hay, Hay make a promotion this week. We've just been chatting about uh, Joe Joyce, who's making his professional debut, the uh, heavyweight. Mm. Um, and uh, that's on Friday. It's live on uh, Dave. Uh, of course, you've got a fight coming up. We shouldn't forget. <laughs> yeah, apparently. apparently you're so. still boxing. You're not just in managing <laughs> promoting, are you? Yeah, I've got a, got a little rematch with a guy called Tony Belly in December 17th, right before Christmas. So hopefully, um, have a good Christmas this, uh, this year. Last think... year, I was working all the way through Christmas. Mm. Everybody wants to see the fight. So oh, no doubt. Hopefully, you can be nice to each other. Before we then. actually had a press conference, and it was it was very very yeah. mellow. Everyone, well, I think it every, be. all the press was there. And they was like, oh, it was a bit, bit boring, wasn't it? I said, like, last time we kicked off, you said it was a disgrace to boxing. We should we should be fine. Now we was actually pleasant to not pleasant to each other. We didn't say anything too derogatory about each other. No, and everyone seemed upset. Everyone was like, oh, that was a bit anticlimactic. I'm like. You complained the whole time last time that we were screaming and shouting. Now we don't, and it, you can't win that. No, it's I think it'd be win. nice. I mean, I think everybody loved the fact that when Joshua fought uh, Klitschko, that they were nice to each other. Yeah. Point. That doesn't I work for every fight. Can't no, handle it. Dinners the night doesn't before work and for all every this. Fight. But if the, fight, <laughs> if the fight's already, you know, I want to see the fight. If every, people want to see it, you yeah. Don't, and you it's don't the first fight it. sells the second fight. I the, yeah, the first exactly. fight, and yeah. everyone thought it was going to be a one-round blowout in my favour. No one thought it'd be a competitive fight. People turned in because the needle between us. This time round, people. People knew it was a great. People know it was a great fight because they saw it first time. And the people who didn't watch it watched it probably on YouTube or the repeats and thought, "Ah, I wish I went to that one or I wish I watched that one live." Yeah. This time round, they're not going to miss it because they know, you know, it was a co very competitive fight from the start. So, and because of what happened to you, I mean, you've got a real kind of global profile. I mean, it's not often you see a guy kind of limping <laughs> round the ring for. I mean, it, you know, you, it, so that I mean, I think that that raised the, the the level of interest in the fight after it, didn't it? Yeah, people people love that type of stuff. People love the. You know, the adversity, the, 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 the fact that people sort of... That's the thing about boxing. That's the thing about combat sports. You can really see people dig in, physically dig in. There's one thing watching a football team dig in. There's another thing seeing a, a hmm. boxer yeah. digging in when you can see what's going place, on. It's a lonely place, isn't it? It's a lonely yeah. place. You know, you, you, can try, you can see me trying to find a way to win and never giving up. And that's what sort of sport at the top level should be about. Yeah. Never giving up. Keep pushing no matter what obstacles in front of you. And people know myself and Tony will just fight till we can't fight no more. And when, and when we both get walked to the ring on uh, December 17th, you know you're yeah. going to get fireworks for sure. No matter what happens, sure. there will be fireworks. It, it's on Sky Box Office, of course. It's on TalkSport. It's live here on TalkSport. And uh, Eddie Hearn, the promoter, has, uh, has been in to see us recently. And he's got his own take on the fight. I'm interested to get David's thoughts on this. This is what Eddie had to say on TalkSport. This time, people 
look at this fight as a real fight. And it is a real heavyweight fight this time. Last time, people were saying, oh, it's a mismatch. You know, he's going to knock out Bellew easy. Bellew took all the punches did, yeah. for five rounds, to be fair well, to him. Well, that must worry, David. Even Forget his Achilles, because mm. Tony took the punches. Tony Bellew is one of the most underrated fighters, probably in world boxing. And I tell you what, he can really fight as well. This time, I see Bellew as the favourite. You know, I think you've got a guy who now believes he can win. You know, he hoped he could win last time, and I'm sure he believed it as well. But this time, he's taken the power. Yeah. You know, and I think this is a really good heavyweight fight. For David Hay, he loses this fight. His That's entire it. career is over, 100%. Thanks. Uh, so, <laughs> well, um, there you go. This, did you, did there you, you have go. to play that in front of him? <laughs> no, I just, I'm interested to get his thoughts on it. I mean, you know, it's out no, there. He, he, he makes some very valid points there. He's right. If, if, I, if I can't beat Tony Bellew, my competitive boxing career is effectively over. There's no even need me mentioning any other names in the heavyweight division about wanting to fight for titles or fight this guy, that guy. If I can't beat Tony Bellew, then it's, then it's over. You know, the first fight, I wasn't good enough. That night, I turned up to fight Tony Belly, March the 4th. I wouldn't have beaten any of the top 10 heavyweights in the world. I wouldn't have beaten anyone did in the top Did you underestimate 20. him a bit, David? Looking I, don't, I don't think I underestimated him, though, because I trained really hard. I was in really good physical condition. I think it was more of a, a game plan thing. It was more of a, you know, maybe letting, letting the emotions of it get to me a little too mm. much, and maybe I let him get under my skin a bit too much. And mm. I just wasn't quite myself. I didn't feel like that was the best version of me walking out there. This time round, we can, we can, I've got a, lucky enough to, you can have a redo. In life, sometimes mm-hmm. you don't get a chance to do a redo, you know, but I've got a chance to do it all over again. So I'm going to try and right some of the wrongs from training, from the, the tactic point of view, from the mindset. And, you know, I've got a chance to do it again. And, you know, the fans are, are, are going to be the ones who get a good night's entertainment. You know, tickets are sold out straight away. You know, everybody's really excited about this fight. Everybody knows now. It's a competitive fight. Mm. And and in the first instance, people didn't believe that. They just thought it was a real big grudge match. This time they know it's a good fight. And if you look at a fight, it was a 50-50 fight. I won the early rounds. He won the late rounds. So I believe that. I believe I can box better than I did in that night. I'm sure he, he now knows me. He's been he's taken mm. my punches. I'm sure he's going to formulate a game plan off the strength of what happened first time. Sure. So we're both coming to the ring with added confidence. Although I lost the fight, I'm coming to this fight with probably more confidence than I did the first time round. I didn't believe I was going to lose the fight. But, you know, I know myself a little bit better. I know something about myself. And it's the first real fight I'd been in in probably over five years. You know, since I fought Derek Chisora in 2012, it was a lot, long time ago. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, the two comeback fights were low-key low affairs. You know, they weren't world beaters. So this is the first time I was in there with someone who had a game plan, who really was trying to, to mess things up for me. Sure. And I'm just happy to be back in the game. I'm 30, he's just turned 37 now. And I, I, feel, I feel real good. I feel real healthy. New coach, new mindset. And I think this is going to be an absolutely cracker, a barnstormer of a fight, a real early Christmas cracker for everybody. Good stuff. Now, um, I think Anthony Joshua's probably going to want you to win. Having, you having said if he can't be oh, better, yeah. you'll retire. Because yeah. he was chatting to our own Darren Goff uh, yesterday ahead of his fight uh, this weekend. Uh, not... Uh, yeah, he's this next weekend. Sorry, next week. Um, so let's hear from uh, Anthony now. If it comes about, if and when, it'll be a, it'll be a, it'll be a good fight. But same with me. I've got to kind of perform against X, X, and X, and X before I get to Hayne. He has to <laughs> perform against Bellew, and maybe it'll be the trilogy against Bellew again before he fights me. So <laughs> we've got to get through looking good, keep our stock high, and then we can create a massive barnstormer. There we are. Yeah, I mean, and if you can get, that obviously that would be on your horizon a fight like that. That would be something else, wouldn't it? That would be the ultimate perfect scenario. You know, I have a couple of fights. He has a couple of fights. He's got a fight in the next weekend. You know, mm. so if we both keep winning, mm. then a, a you know a, a f- big football stadium, me and Joshua it doesn't get any bigger than that. But I can't even remotely even start thinking about that if I can't perform against Tony Bellew. Even if I beat Tony Bellew. But I scrape through. I get knocked down. I, I'm struggling. I'm, mm. you know, my my shoulder pops. Whatever, whatever issue I have, people, I can't then realistically say I want to fight this big guy who's three inches taller, three stone bigger, ten years younger, undefeated, hundred percent knocker. I, I, be, if people go, come on, Dave, get real. Yeah, I don't mm. want that. And I'm smart enough to know if and when I can, you know, challenge for people. You know, at the moment I feel great. At the moment I feel I can beat Tony Belly. But then again, prior to the first fight, I thought I could, and I was wrong. So this fight is going to show me whether I've still got it or I haven't. Either way, it's going to be entertaining for everyone else. But for me, after the fight, even if I win, I may retire. I might say, okay, although I've just about scraped through this fight, 
I know I can't compete with these big guys. That was 10 years ago. Uh -huh. But I believe, I really believe deep in my heart, I've still got it. And I just want the opportunity to show it. And fortunately, Tony Belly was giving me a second chance. And then we can hopefully look for 2018 for some mega showdowns. Excellent. Well, it's live on TalkSport in mm. December. Before that, as we said, tune in to Dave. What time is, is it, Dave? It's 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. There's still a few tickets left if people want to go down to the Indigo at the O2 Arena. Just the first time they've had boxing in the Indigo. It's the first time they've had yeah. boxing there. It's quite a surprise. It's such yeah. a fantastic little venue. They've had kickboxing there. They've had jujitsu. They've had everything other than boxing. So they've got boxing down there now. So come down. It's going to be a fun night of entertainment. I think we've got 12 fights on the card. Yeah. So lots of good young prospects. And obviously culminating in a 10-round fight with uh, Joe Joyce. And, um, you can say you were there the first night he fought. You can, one of those you nights. Can. Don't, don't wait and don't jump on the bandwagon after yeah. it's got going. Get on there <laughs> first. Say you was there. Who'd want to say there was that Joe, uh, uh, my my pro debut or uh, yeah, uh, Andy Joshua's, Joshua's or Lennox Lewis's? You want to say I was there at that first? But I knew, I knew <laughs> <laughs> he was going to be a world champion. Exactly. Good stuff. All the best, David. We'll catch up with you soon. Thanks, Thanks very lot. much for joining us. What are you soon? Thanks, Thanks very much for joining us. What are you soon? Thanks, Thanks very much for joining us. What are you soon? Thanks, Thanks very much for joining us.